Welcome back to the Old Fashioned Real Estate Show. I'm Brian Leverage. And I'm Jeffrey Holst. And we're glad to be here with you guys today. Oh, I am. I'm really glad, actually. Because yeah. we have a fascinating topic yeah, today. We have a warm electric fire heating us. It's uh, actually not warm I at don't all. I feel any heat, It's fake. Actually. It's because the heat's I feel, turned off. I feel no heat coming from the electric fire. But I am excited about the topic today. Yeah, are what are we talking about? about? Appreciation. Okay. Appreciation for... People or things? In values. Appreciation in values. Welcome to the Old Fashioned Real Estate Show, where hosts Brian Leverage and Jeffrey Holst for our Old Fashioned Real Estate Advice. So, there are four ways you make money in real estate. We did an episode right there about this already called The Four Sources of Real Estate Returns. And Last time on the show, we talked about one of those. Today, we're going to talk about the fourth one. So the first one is cash flow, which I think is self-explanatory. People like it when money comes to them. Mm -hmm. Followed cash by flow. amortization gains. Yeah, amortization gains, which is what we did on right. last time. And then tax benefits, because you're going to probably benefits. try to trip me up on that again. Well, maybe. But yeah. in fairness, we've done two episodes on tax benefits. Most recently, we did this yeah. one on cost segregations. And then before we did one on 1031s, which I think was episode eight, if anyone wants uh, to look that And up. last, but certainly not least of the four is... Appreciation. The subject of today's show. It is the subject of today's show, but if you want to be honest, it might actually be the least of the four. Depends Dep on how you look at depends it. Depends on how you look at it. I'm going to go with that. So, uh, what do you think about appreciation? Do you like it? Are you against it? Are you for it? What is it? <laughs> I'm just. Gonna, I'm gonna go with that was probably rhetorical in a way. No, I'm just gonna interview you. Are do you do you approve of appreciation? Or I this? appreciate appreciation. That's what I was just gonna say. I like where you're going with. Yeah. This. So I also appreciate appreciation. What I do also appreciate though is de depreciation. Yes. Which That's is another uh, kind of ironic. Actually, yeah. that falls under tax advantages of real estate, right. which we covered previously. Right. Anyway, so appreciation, simply stated, is when the value of an asset goes up. This could be something like a stock, or it could be, in the case of the old-fashioned real estate show, good old-fashioned real property. estate. Property. Yeah, No, exactly. you should have said real estate, not property. Well, we also own old-fashioned properties. That's true, and old-fashioned management. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And oldfashionedtaxsavings.com, which is our sponsor today. <laughs> and now, a word from our sponsors. Who's sponsoring us today, Brian? Well, we are, Jeff. We are. How yes. amazing. So we want to tell you about how you can save an enormous amount of money on your taxes and how Brian no. and I have been able to eliminate no. our taxes entirely. You guys need to learn about cost segregation, which you can do by going to our website, oldfashionedtaxsavings.com. Yes, and if you go there and you fill out the form, you can get a free, no cost benefit analysis that will show you how much money you can save and what it will take to do that. All right. So getting back into appreciation, um, there's a couple of different ways a property for our purposes here appreciates. Why don't you give us a few? Sure, so the, the most commonly understood version of appreciation is just when the property value goes up over time. Generally speaking, and our friend Harry Dent has told us many times now that, and we did an episode with him too. Yes, we did. Right up there. That was a great episode. You should check that one out. But as Harry Dent says, property tends to go up with the cost of inflation. So over the long term, property values go up because everything goes up in price, essentially. Yes. And that's sort of market-based appreciation. Now, that might vary from market to market. For example, over the last several years, we've seen significant appreciation in Chattanooga and actually in all the markets which we follow. Um, but, you know, sometimes you see 5% appreciation. Sometimes you see 10%. Sometimes you see negative appreciation. Well, and even within a market, it bears repeating that you know, some areas, submarkets, some markets, if you yeah. will, appreciate faster than others. Right. And also some types of property appreciate faster than others. Apartment complexes have gone up a lot lately, but, you know, maybe uh, yeah. retail space is not. I don't know. I'm well, not so, sure. Yeah. I mean, as an example, I uh, bought my first apartment building in Chattanooga seven years ago. And in that time, prices have more than doubled on a per unit basis. Should have held on to that one. Yeah. It's okay. It was only six units. Still, I mean, 
But the point is, you don't have any control over appreciation. So what else is there to talk about? We just just the other types happens. of appreciation. Right. See, that's the thing about appreciation, and this goes back to what we were saying at the beginning about how uh, appreciation is either the least significant part of your real estate investing or perhaps the most significant part of your real estate investing. It's nowhere in between. It's one or the other, and it just depends on what you mean by appreciation. And, and so while our friends at Bigger Pockets um, do advise to invest for cash flow as, a, as an individual should, just to be clear, well, cash flow is a measure of safety, right? If you don't have cash flow, you can't pay your mortgage in the event of a downturn. Right. No, nobody's saying go buy negative carry properties in the hopes that they'll appreciate one day. That is not a good strategy. Right. And I've known people that bought stuff in 2007, 2006 that didn't cash flow. The market went down and they ended up bankrupt. I know right. this because I was a bankruptcy attorney at the right. time and, and I saw a lot clients. of that. Yes. Yeah. So... The thing about it is that you can't, um, while you don't want to invest in a negative carry property, the point is that like, if you look at it in a, in a simple view, like you will, the more properties you buy, the more cash flow you will generate. But speaking generally to that, you're not going to retire off of that cash flow, off of a portfolio of say, 10 or 20 like I mean, single it's, family it's houses. It's possible to retire yes. off of cash flow, but what you, you have really, to pay them off first. Yeah. Right. Or Which you have is to have a pre, or, yeah. yeah, or you have to have a lot of them, right? I mean, yeah. there, there are ways to do it, but the reality is you're not going to cash flow yourself to wealth very quickly. Because if you buy a single family house and it makes $200 a month, you got to buy a lot of single family houses if you want to be rich. Yes. Right? But the thing is, when you use leverage, and we did a whole episode about leverage as well, uh, and not this not leverage, me. which we did an episode like that too. <laughs> that was episode two for what anyone's <laughs> – I can't do this many tags, so you're just going to have to look that one up. But, um, but you know, if you have leverage and you get the amortization gains, which we talked about last time, but – also, you get accelerated appreciation effectively by having leverage because if you buy a $100,000 property and you pay 20% down, let's say, so you have $20,000 down and it goes up like 3%, it went up $3,000 on $100,000, but it also went up $3,000 on your $20,000. So that leverage can really accelerate the stuff. But again, you still don't have control over that. What really matters is when you can control appreciation. So let's talk about different ways that you can control your appreciation. Because you can't control the market. That's unless true. you're really rich. And yeah. We're not. So, <laughs> so I mean, we're, we're doing okay, but like we can't control the market. Yeah. So outside of market-based appreciation, there's what's called forced appreciation. Right. And, and forced appreciation essentially comes about by you buying a property, typically at a discount, improving it, and then forcing the rents. Right. And you know, if we're talking about like apartments, commercial, et cetera, you can often achieve higher rents than other competitors that don't have upgraded properties, which gives you a greater value on your property than they have. Right, so there's really two different ways to look at forced appreciation. You've got like residential forced appreciation, which is like when you're just the same thing what flippers are doing, but it's like the burr strategy, right? You put in some sweat equity, and you get increased values as a result of that. Huh. You bought at a discount and you've essentially raised the value of the property by fixing it up. Uh, put it put into the residential terms, a real world example, um, I did a couple of years ago, bought a duplex here in Chattanooga and <clears throat> bought it fairly cheap, rehabbed it significantly, and then leased it out higher than anything on that block except for maybe yours. Uh, but at the time, I think the highest sale in that neighborhood was one hundred and forty or forty-five thousand dollars. Well, I sold that property several months later at one seventy-five. Thank you for that, by the way. You're welcome. I was able to sell mine for one eighty-five yeah. because that's of right. that. I should get half that at least. <laughs> yeah. So the difference. But again, <laughs> what that's a perfect example of residential forced appreciation because I have several other properties on the block, and Brian and I now have one on that same block as well. Every time that we fix up one property on the block, we're raising the value of the whole block. Yeah. And so now properties are going up all over. Now, of course, part of that is also market-based appreciation. Everywhere in Chattanooga, the value of duplexes have gone up in the last couple of years. Yeah. 
We can't say we can't take credit for that. But we forced, in part, to a sure. small degree, the market to go up in the first place. In that by, small, in yeah. that small submarket of that yeah. particular street. And so that's what you can do on the residential side. But when you get to commercial properties, and we're talking about five units and up, or we're talking about industrial buildings or commercial buildings office, of other kinds yeah. of office, all that kind of stuff, then you're looking at a totally different way to value property. And this is where forced appreciation becomes extremely lucrative. And that is because you're using the income approach. The income approach, again, is essentially saying that the more income you have, the more valuable the property is, mm -hmm. which it applies to a small degree in residential. But in reality, people, if you can buy one duplex for a hundred thousand, you're not going to pay two hundred for oh. another just because the rents are higher. It's even worse with single family val uh, properties because their values are derived almost entirely from their resale value right. in an open market, approach. not so much what their rent they produce for you know right. or is. So. But so when you look at uh, an income based approach, what you're basically doing is you have a specific market capitalization rate, which we don't have any control on, and we did a whole episode about that as well. Cap rates explained. <laughs> I feel like we're pointing up a Tagging lot. In a this lot episode. here. There's a lot of tags in this episode, but that's okay because it's just you know by the time you get done watching all the videos we tagged in this episode, you're gonna know everything there is to know about real estate investing. <laughs> We've covered the whole range of topics. That's not true, just to be clear. But um, but the point is, if you raise the income of a property, you raise the value. Cap rates are an inverse relationship, so the lower the cap rate, the higher you get on return, which means if you have the income, let's just to put the numbers on, you know, sort of out in the world. If you had a property that made, say, $10,000 a month or a year in income, let's just say that's what it makes, and you're Let's say it was a 10 cap. That makes the math really easy for 100 us. 100 grand. Yeah. So the property is worth $100,000 because it's $10,000 divided by 10%. The, the capitalization rate equals $100,000. That means that someone will look at that and say, for that stream of cash flows, I'm willing to pay $100,000. That's what the market's decided. Well, if that same property is now making $11,000 a year, it's worth how much, Brian? More. Yes, correct. <laughs> $110,000, it turns out. I think he might have done one too many drinks because his math's a little uh, questionable at this point. I thought you were maybe going in the direction of if that property sold at an eight cap or a nine cap. Oh, no, no, no. Uh, that's too yeah, much. Yeah. That's too complicated. Because, see, that's the other form of appreciation because that's not really forced appreciation. That's more market. That's a market based measure. But well, you can drive that too, as we Sure, alluded by to moving earlier. something from one class of property to another, by improving the neighborhood. You might be able to lower the cap rates, thereby increasing the value. So a perfect example is this. The very first apartment complex I bought was a 12 unit, not too far from here. The 12 unit apartment complex, when I bought it, appraised at a nine cap. The market has since gotten better, so it's probably a seven cap market right now where that property is. Not through anything that I did, it's just that the values have gone up. The lower the cap rate, the higher the value. During that same time, I moved rents from $600 to about $1,000, an enormous increase. So when you combine those two things, a tremendous amount of appreciation, and this is actually why we're saying that appreciation is both the least important and most important way to make money in real estate investing because the market-based appreciation I have no control of. It just happens. But that rental increase, $400 per unit times 12 times 12 months, is a significant increase in the NOI. I didn't do the math on that, but what's 400 times 12 times 12? I wasn't listening. Yeah, I don't know either. Yeah. But it's a lot. It's, a, it's essentially like a 70% increase in value from 600 to 1,000. Yeah, 70% increase in value, which means this property, which I bought for 650,000 is now worth a million plus and in just a few short years. And that's primarily because of the increase in yeah. rents, not because of the market increase. Exactly. And I think if we want to boil this down pretty simply, the point kind of becomes those investors that are willing to reinvest in their property and essentially give themselves a competitive advantage by having a better product, right. et cetera, they're going to attract uh, a better tenant usually, but more importantly, they're going to get more rent, which is what we're talking about here with forced appreciation. Sure. Re reducing the expenses or increasing yeah. the rent. And both of those things happen when you invest in their property. You get better rents and because you have newer stuff, you have lower expenses. Yeah. 
But your your biggest gains are going to be me be made on uh, increasing your income. Expense control, yes, there's that. We're not trying to gloss over that, but like that is far less, in my opinion, than you know raising your rents. I mean. I, it, because of the way cap rates work, it just depends. If you have a property that has in, is managed inefficiently and you take it over, you can cut back on the expenses and it can make an enormous difference. But the reality is raising the rents is sort of the low hanging fruit of increasing NOI. The higher your NOI is, the higher the value, thereby forcing appreciation. And this is where I think that bigger pockets that you mentioned earlier often glosses over. And that is, it is impossible in my estimation, I think you'd probably agree with this, to cash flow yourself to the kinds of wealth that you can get from forced appreciation. I agree. All right, well, with that, Brian, cheers.